pass. So let's see how it works. Maybe as we walk over towards that other direction there. Sure. Okay. So live here with Marcus. How are you? Good to meet you, Marcus. Crowdsource the Truth community. Well, how are you doing? So, Marcus, you are a whistleblower. You used to be with the Department of Sanitation here in New York, right? That's correct, yes. What can you tell us about that? What happened and how has it affected your life since then? Yeah, so, you know, I, um, I, was a, I grew up in the city. I grew up in New York City my whole life. I'm in my early 50s at this point. And, um, oh, you look good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Let's keep walking. So, uh, you know, and uh, so I've, I've done a lot of, I uh, used to live in the city in Manhattan, down the block in uh, Soho and Chinatown and lived a little while in Washington Heights. And uh, so, you know, I, I lived that kind of bohemian downtown lifestyle, you know, and, uh -huh. and, um, and then I, I uh, 2008 sure. happened. Yeah, sure. You want to say? Yeah. What, what happened in 2008? Hi, how you doing? What's up, little fella? So in 2000, 2008, then the um, you know the markets crashed. Oh right, of course. And um, you know, uh, so you know, so at that point, I, I, I took a I took a bit of a uh, a, a crash and burn, and um, been living in, living out in Brooklyn for a while, and then uh, you know, so so growing up in the city, you know, I always I always um, had friends that were either you know police officers or sanitation workers or all city workers, and you always had the idea that. You know, a city job was 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 fantastic. It nice had real and stable it, and everything. Stable. It had real benefits. It was it was um, on the easy side, you know. And so I took a bunch of tests. I took the civil service test for um, you know uh, various city city jobs. I took the sanitation worker test, and I took the uh, enforcement uh, sanitation enforcement test, and got a high a high mark on it, and then um, got called. And uh, went down there and you know took the job and um, that was 2015. That was it was actually December 2014 and I worked there for one year. I went through the training. So I think a lot of people might not know exactly what that is. So sanitation yeah. enforcement, you're kind of like yeah. a police officer working yeah. for the DSNY. You're not collecting trash, right? No, you're not collecting trash. What you're doing is you're enforcing the DSNY rules and regulations. Mostly, it's mostly garbage. It's not. It's not rocket science. It's, you know, it's people who recycle incorrectly. Like if you put your New York City has very strict rules about recycling. So if you put your black bag out and it has recycling in, in it, uh, you know, we'll go through your garbage and and call you out on that, and you get a ticket. Or, uh, or if you put your garbage out on the wrong uh, the wrong day. <laughs> And was it mostly businesses or individuals? It's both. It's everything. It's it's commercial. It's residential. Right. And and uh, you know and there's also the, the more severe uh, infractions like dumping uh, or stealing the recyclables. But we have. Uh, I was just an enforcement agent. I wasn't. A, I wasn't a, 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 a police officer. But we have those. We had those guys on on the radio, so so you could call the yeah, uh, we could NYPD call the, at a moment's yeah, notice. They they should. Well, no, we have a. The SMY has their own police. We had a uh -huh. little squad of, uh, I, I don't know, it's still a mystery how many there are. Maybe like 30 or 40. And they, they have guns. 30 or 40 officers. Yeah, yeah. 30 and they or have 40 guns. They, they have, have guns. jurisdictions yeah, throughout they, New yes, York yes, City. Yes, yes. And if they witness a crime, even if it doesn't have to do with. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah they're, yes, they're, they're peace officers or police officers. So, yeah, they have that. Did you have any interaction with the uh, JTTF? We've heard a lot about that on Crowdsource the Truth. No. No, I, but what I can tell you about the connection to what's going on is is there's a very um, there's a very thin line between uh, New York City Hall and the Department of Sanitation is what I learned because the the Department of Sanitation is uh, where I work the enforcement part of it is a very um, is a smaller division of the people that actually pick up the garbage that you see going around with the trucks and. They, they're, they're under the jurisdiction of one particular chief, and then there's a chain of command underneath that chief. Uh -huh. There's captains, there's lieutenants, there's sergeants. There's wow, so they really do treat it like a police force. Yeah, right? it is. Oh, no, it's a police force. It's it's, it's, it's wow, quasi-military police force. A lot force. of people didn't like, realize that. They just yeah, think they're collecting uniform. garbage. Yeah, no, we, I, I patrolled right in this neighborhood with, you know, with a... With a uh, police uniform on, and that—that's something everybody should experience once in their life. Walking around a police uniform. Well, walking around a police uniform is is uh, is quite a trip. You know, you're treated 
you're treated uh, very differently, you know? How so? Well, there, pe despite what people think, you're not disrespected. You're actually very respected. People will, they call you officer. They, they yield to you when you when you speak. Even when you're writing a ticket, you know, you get cursed out, but that's, that's, that's not often. That uh -huh. wasn't, that wasn't, the, you know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've, I've been called everything, you know, and my mother, so. Oh, wow. But that's, that's uh, part of it. And then, uh, but, you know, and then, I, you want to hear the saddest story of wearing yeah. a uniform? Yeah. Saddest story I ever, I ever had was, I was up in, um, I was, I was up in Washington Heights, and this, uh, group of kids with their teacher walk by you know like they do in New York like there's a whole bunch field of kids trip or something yeah like, like that. some kind of field trip and all the young kids maybe like I don't know six or seven they're walking with two teachers and I hear the teacher say oh there that's a police officer make sure your hands are up jeez yeah I mean it was that that um, that was that's something it disturbed wow, me. You talk know? about indoctrination. Yeah, it really that that moment it disturbed me. Like I was, I was ready to be you know friendly to these kids and and, and here, here they are like this is you know 2005 and the fear factor with the police and that, that that was you know and not wearing uh, having worn the uniform that's how I how I felt that you know I'm I'm I spent a lot of time in my life not a uh, you know, not, a, not that cop. It was very brief. Um, right. So how did the whistleblowing come yeah. about? What was that all about? So we're in, you know, we're in training. The SNY does a fairly good job of, of training their um, uh, enforcement agents. And, uh, you know, and there was really, in the training, there was there was really no mention of a quota, per se. It was just... A ticket quota. A ticket mean. quota, yeah. A ticket quota is just, for, if you're not familiar with that, is... Ticket quotas in law enforcement across the country are illegal. Is because it encourages a, the officers to give out tickets rather than enforce the law. Correct. It, it it forces them to put discretion in their pocket and just write the ticket because you know it's three o'clock and they, yeah. It's like it's, a sales job in that case. It's yeah, it becomes a sales job, and you, what you find yourself doing is is running people over with tickets. And there's also you know incredible speculation that a lot of the tickets that agents write are fakes. What do you uh, mean fakes? Fakes. They write tickets, you know, to things you that know didn't that didn't happen. That didn't happen. They just write them, and and then someone's got to go challenge it in court. Right. In fact, the statistic that I found: eighty-one point four percent of all DSMY tickets contested uh, are found to have uh, no violation found. Wow. Yeah. So and then there's a lot of them that go a, uncontested because someone just pays people, the fine right. and doesn't want to bother. Right, because it's New York City. Wow. People just pay the fine. Wow. How much is the typical fine of a of a DSNY? Yeah. Ticket? So if it's recycling in a residential, that's the low end. It's twenty five dollars. Oh. And no, but if it's commercial, dirty sidewalk, or for example, if somebody walks by and litters, uh -huh. that the littering ticket I I think is two hundred fifty. I wrote a few of those. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. And what I mean, about throwing down a cigarette butt? Is that littering? Cigarette butts are not considered litter. Why? I, I, I don't know. That should, know. Be. should be. It should be. Uh, uh, dog, dog crap. You don't pick up after yeah, you. Yeah, what about yeah. that? Yeah, you know. That's, did you ever give me a ticket for that? I, I never did. I tried once. And? And so I, so I, that's a funny story. I, I go up and this guy is like this football player. Right. Huge man with this dog that was about the same size. <laughs> And I say, oh, your dog, you know, you're going to clean up after that dog? You're in uniform. I'm in uniform. I'm sitting in the car, and I roll the window down. I roll the window down. I push the window down, right? And I say, oh, you're going to clean up after that guy? And he looked at me. He said, he said, why don't you mind your own goddamn business and sweep the streets? Right? And some, some, I was like, well, you know, and he, okay. I just pushed the window back up and took off. Wow. The, that was the end of that. Huh. All right, so the so, whistleblowing. Uh, so, yeah, the whistleblowing. so the whistleblowing. You found so, that all these tickets were fake. Yeah. Quotas. You found there was a quota, in fact. No, there, there is a quota. If you go, um, I what I did was, I tried to um, I tried to be nice. And uh, there's also here, here's the other part that a lot of people might not want to hear in New York City is that the the part of the Department of Sanitation that I work for, um, the enforcement division is very much like the Department of Traffic, and for some reason. 
I'm not saying the reason, but for some reason there's an, uh, a very high percentage of minorities, uh, non-white, meaning black and Hispanic in my, in my division. So 90, uh, I would say 85% of the people who are uh, the workers, the agents are black and Hispanic, and 100% of my supervisors were black and Hispanic. Now that's not to say that these are racist people, right? But there, there was, in the end, in the final analysis, there was an element of racism where... Against you. Against me. I was targeted for what I believe to, to have been exposing the quota, but there was also this element of racism that the uh, people of color were kind of being used as, you know, human shields. To hide behind them because if you criticize them, you're seen as racist. Right. Exactly. Exactly, and in the in the yeah in the so final, the very very top was white guys. Yeah, in the Department of Sanitation, all the chiefs, all the the people of importance are all white. The right. commissioner is white. Right. Uh, Catherine Garcia, she's white. Uh, there's a chief. I, I don't care about naming your names, so you get you get a name. There's Chief Klinger, Klingler. Um, he's white, Irish guy. They're all you know, and then there's there's uh, Burke. So they was, put these so sort these of are the, middle these are the, managers in there right, who and, are. Right. Maybe minorities, so that if you call yeah. them out, they can easily paint you as a racist. Right, right. And a lot of them, you know, in in my opinion, had very, you know, there was a lot of racial overtones to their, um, uh, in their tone. I mean, for one example, you can read this case on any one of my videos, and you, you'll, you'll oh, see. Oh yeah, it. tell people where they can find your videos. Yeah, Marcus Conti, uh, DSNY whistleblower. Just go to YouTube, and you'll, if you put in my name and. Um, Whistleblower or DSNY corruption, you'll find it. And uh, I, you know, look, I'm not a, I'm not looking to be a journalist or this is like accidental whistleblowing. Uh -huh. And so, um, so, so there's. I just want to finish that. There's that aspect. There was that as element of, of racism in there. But what really was was beyond that was the fact that. I was being treated very differently, and I called them out on the on the quota. I said, "Hey, by the way, you guys have an illegal ten ticket quota. You know, it's ten uh, tickets per ten tickets per day per agent. Wow, every single day. Wow. And did they tell you that? How did you know that? Yeah. Well, it's all. I, I mean, it, it's that sort of thing is common, common talk. Someone says to you, "Hey, Marcus, you got to get ten tickets." Out yeah, it's today. ten tickets. That that's that's the norm. Ten tickets. It's all documented. Every day um, when you're a, co a police officer or an agent for the city, you write everything down in what's called Form 144. Uh -huh. So you have this daily um, log, uh -huh. and somewhere towards the end of the day, a supervisor will come by and see, and for what's called a C. You know, and you'll see police officers sometimes, you'll see a, a sergeant approach the car and they're talking, and right. that's, they're conducting what's called a C. They want to see what you're up to. Yeah, see what you're up to, exactly. And in, in, in enforcement, the only thing to see is how many tickets you got. You know, and then when you show them how many tickets you got, it's all electronic. You, show, you print out a receipt, and it shows you how many tickets you got, what times, you know. Right. And then they document that on your 144 and what's, sign off on it. What's that's, the 144? That's the... That's, that's your daily, uh, uh, daily log. Sorry, you were talking about the 144. Yeah. So 144, that's the uh, it's a daily log. It's it's probably called different uh, things throughout enforcement, but in in um, the SMY was uh, daily uh, uh, daily 144. And then what they do is they take those numbers and crunch it into another book called the 206 book. Uh -huh. Right. So I'm I'm just throwing all this stuff out there because here's the deal: the DSNY uh, Department of Sanitation denies they think. They tried to make me out to be a liar and a crazy person and a, you know, uh, a, a disgruntled employee. Uh -huh. And uh, it's believable because there's such a, uh, 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 I think what, what people don't realize is the element of fear uh, that's, that uh, occurs in law enforcement where they, they it's like no other kind of um, uh, job. Maybe it is. I How don't do you know. mean? What fear? In that, in that, you're, you're, um, it's kind of like uh, you, you get attacked from different supervisors, and you're not really sure why they're attacking you, and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're falsely written up for things that didn't happen, or you're, huh, I was asked to sign blank, you know, blank form, blank 
here, sign this. It's it's an evaluation. It's blank. Huh. I'm like, I'm not gonna sign that. It's blank. You know, put some put some stuff on it and give me a copy and I'll sign it. They would, you know, so so that's how eventually, ultimately, that's how they um, they fired me uh, using uh, fake write-ups as an excuse to huh. not look at the 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 discrimination and the fact that I was calling them out on the quota. So where did you, this whistleblowing occurred on YouTube or through some official channel? Have you, yeah. has any, have any of these guys gotten into trouble who you've uh, called out? Okay, so from there, uh, no, YouTube thing came much later uh -huh. because I wasn't getting any satisfaction. Right. I was getting, that's where it gets, that, this is where the story gets really ugly and this is what has kind of driven me to stay with it because if it's happening at DSNY, it's likely happening at all of the, the, the city uh, city agencies. That Maybe NYPD as well. Yeah, well, Maybe. NYPD, no, no, for sure. They just paid out 2008 settlement or 2000. It was in the post. They paid out the $73 million settlement for... To who? Quota, to to uh, the officers. It's a class action suit. Wow. Want to get the squirrel guy? He's coming in for, uh, for him. New York, the squirrels are <laughs> part of the scenery. Yeah, they're part of the scenery. Like so that's... wait a minute. So the officers of yeah. the NYPD sued the city? Yes, in a class action suit. And they settled. See, a lot of times they, they like to settle before they have to reveal the real dirt. And in that case, they did settle without admitting any guilt. See, now, my case is different because I took the route of discrimination because that was really happening. So what I did was I went to New York Division of Human Rights. I filed first. I started. I filed a complaint with their inside the agency EEO department, and they kind of, you know, brushed it off. Like, I've been hearing a lot about EEO. Right? Yeah, EEO, Equal Employment, Employment Opportunity. Opportunity. It's nothing. There's no, there's no, no justice there. So they. Why do of, you say that? Well, they they basically. You know, I, I, there was a, there's a lot of other stuff. I was attacked, kind of verbally attacked in a in a boardroom for something that just didn't happen. And and uh, I went that. And that's what I said. You know what? I had enough of this. I'm not going to get screamed at, and belittled, and, you know, attacked uh, for for reasons that I'm still not sure. And this was about the six month mark. So it started there, and then I got no satisfaction. So I went to the New York State Division of Human Rights. Uh huh. Which, scarily, I don't know if that's a word, but well. scarily, they sided 100% with DSNY. It's like, I was, I, they didn't even consider anything that I told them. They refused to listen to the recordings of oh, actual, you, you had secret recordings I had of conversations? Yeah, I, had, I had, after I filed with, with EEO, actually before, they don't know exactly what I have, and I have a lot. I started to record all their conversations. So I have, a, for example, a 22 minute, um, you know, manifesto of a lieutenant describing exactly the quota. And you can go to my site at secret audio number one, and you'll hear him in his own words describe the quota. So I'm not making it up. The mo modus operandi is go out, write tickets. When you write tickets, you're a good guy, you're, everybody loves you, and you go home. For me, that wasn't the case. So. I had to say to myself, I was out there and I did the job. I wrote 10 tickets every day. It's documented. But I was treated differently. So that's why it appeared it appeared to be discrimination. And so then I went to DSNY, uh, the New York State Division of Human Rights. And um, there I uh, I was fired before the case was, was resolved. Huh. <laughs> right? and, and so what are you doing now? What's your line of work now? Well, I, I like to keep I like to keep that off the record. Okay, I, sure. I, but I you do, are working. You are working. Well, I do some stuff. I, I teach guitar. I also busk. I'm a, I'm, I'm a musician, so I, you know. I, I guess what I'm getting at is I it, sing on the subway. Is it sometimes. right? Is it difficult for you to earn a it's living? It's very now? it's very difficult. Um, they caused a lot of a lot of damage. You know, it, some of those some of those jobs are you wait. You know, for example, I waited almost three years to be called for that job. And, and I was excited to do it. And, um, you know, and I, I would imagine that I'm now blacklisted from city employment. We're going to find out about that. So, you know, we've became, got some executive recruiters in the crowdsource community. Maybe yeah. we can call on them to help yeah. you find some employment. Yeah, sure. I, I appreciate that. Um, 
yeah, that's that's a bonus. But you know, to the crowdsource community, I would say you know, look look into if you're if you're in New York City, uh, and you, you you know, especially to the good folks over at True Pundit that are either ex you know officers, FBI, and all those guys, or you're you know, because I'm a, I'm a fan of this show, so I know all the characters. You know, I know Deep Uranium, and I know you know George <laughs> Webb. I know everybody. Right. And. Um, and you know, I want to I want to say this too. I'm I'm not. I I will quote uh, Kurt Cobain said. He said when when the, the whole grunge thing took off, and they kept asking him. He said, "Oh, you're like the leader of a of the grunge movement." And he 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 did not really get it because he was he was part of something that was bigger than him. And he, he kind of realized that he's like, "No, I'm not. I'm not the leader of anything. I'm just." I'm just in it, and then he, he said, he said, I'm, I'm just glad to be part of it, you know, and um, that, that's kind of how I feel about it, I feel like that um, I'm certainly not leading anything, and my, my, my message is that, that the whistleblowing doesn't happen down air, it happens, it happens right where you are, and I think that, I think that a lot of people, you know, reach out to, you know, the judiciary, and they get left you know, hung out to dry. They get, um, they go to their to, to their supervisors, and when and then when you get to the courts and you try to fight the establishment, you're, you're fighting city hall. You you get you know thrown under the bus. So the the status of the cases, I'll just just briefly. I went to uh, Division of Human Rights. I lost. I go down to Supreme Court. You lost, file. huh? Yeah, I lost. I lost. They said no probable cause. They said that there was no probable cause. There was no casual connection between you being fired and all the shit that happened to you. That's what they concluded. So I, the, 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 the way to contest that is then you go to Supreme Court, which is uh, downtown, 60 Center Street, and you file what's called Article 78. Uh-huh. And you bring your case. What you're trying to do is you're trying to overturn that decision in Supreme Court. And in my case, you know, the judges have a lot of um, uh, flexibility to do what they're going to do. Right. And in my case, it was summary judgment. They just, she, she wrote it, she wrote a summary judgment and just agreed with everything that the city said and everything that the Division of Human Rights said, and that was the end of it. Didn't so, even listen to your argument. Didn't even listen to the argument, refused to listen to the recordings, refused to even wow. consider. Wow, your evidence, wouldn't listen to the wouldn't evidence. Listen, wouldn't listen to the evidence, wouldn't consider never once mentions in the whole, in any of the documents so far not a single judge or agency has mentioned the quota other than the Department of Sanitation who, who disputes that there is a quota and you know that's you've just, got recordings have, of their uh, lieutenants have, talking in, about in it in their own words I have, I have the, you know I have uh, uh, I already it's you know it's public um, so despite the evidence yeah the judicial system totally let you down. Totally let me down. So, so where that leads now is okay. So, let's so you get, so you lose in discrimination court, and you lose in in article. And this is all I no lawyers. So I'm all pro se, right? So, this is what they try to do. They try to wear you down, right? They try to wear you down, you know. And and um, that's how they win because people are not gonna fight and keep fighting. Right. And, they're there they, in court every day. You need yeah. money and time and right, right, right. So, so once you lose there, you still you still have other options. You're not out of the game. And here's where the big one comes. It's the appeal, right? It's like in the DNC fraud lawsuit. Everybody yeah. thinks that they lost. They didn't really lose. What they what they got they lost in round one. They lost to what I, I mentioned before. What's called summary judgment. Which right. Means the judge just pens a summary. It may sound like I know a lot about the law. I learned everything, you know, through trial and error. Fighting know, just, City Hall. Just fighting City Hall, you figure it out. So the Becks, you know, they, they're championing that DNC lawsuit. And, you know, they're, they're not losing. They're, they're now in the appeals process where DNC will have to respond to that appeal. They have to respond. Right. And that's the most, that's the most revealing uh, response. Because appeals court, are not, it's not one judge. It's a panel. Now, which leads, that's federal. What I'm doing is state, and right, well, actually, this is not by coincidence, but the court is, is right there. Where is it? Over here? You see, yeah, so that's, that yeah. building over with there the with the construction. park. Yeah, the construction, that's, 
I'll explain the court system. That is the, there's only four appellate divisions in the state of New York. Right. Right. And then there's what's called the Court of Appeals. Uh huh. Right. And that's going to lead me to the to the other story that I wanted to tell you about sure. about what we were talking about. Is that okay? So so now my case now moves to the high court. It's out of what we call the low courts downtown, uh -huh. 60 Center Street, and now we move to the appeals court. Which yeah, again, four. This is Department One. It's Manhattan and Queens, uh, Manhattan and the Bronx. And then there's Division Two, which is another part of the state of New York. And then there's three and four. Right, and and that covers all of New York State, and then right above them is the Court of Appeals. It's kind of like Supreme Court, where there's there's um, district courts all over the state, and then there's the Supreme Court that we all know, you know, with the nine justices, and right, that's in D.C. But in New York State, the Court of Appeals, what we what would be the state equivalent of the Supreme Court, is in Albany. But the, these are the in, intermediary. Uh, appellate courts they're just as powerful they're just as binding right and if you you know if you lose here then your next step is Supreme Court in DC which I'm prepared to do right? but you're doing this all pro se or it's I mean it's costing all, a ton of money no it's all pro se there's ways to get around the fees because I'm technically a poor person this is you know it's hard for them to argue that that I have you know money you lost <laughs> so your job I lost my job right this is a, a, a case of uh, so that there is a lot of fees involved. If you were to start downtown, there's, you know, there's a, there's a million different little fees and processes. Yeah, this and, is part of the way the bureaucracy, you know, they know you're going to have to do all this, whether right. it's pro se or whatever. Right. I've got a similar thing happening. Got a ridiculous lawsuit that's yeah. been filed but not yet served. And okay. obviously, the individual who has brought that suit is trying to waste my time, trying to rely on the bureaucracy of the process and trying to, you know, right. use right. that disadvantage. Right. And it's going to cost, you know, time and right. effort and that equals money. Yeah, it's a, it's a really horrible thing to do to someone to... Well, it's a really know. horrible guy who's doing it and I think everybody knows who I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I know I know a little bit about it. I know about that. He uh, enjoys thing. robbing and stealing. <laughs> I'll say I'll, I'll say <laughs> But anyway, this so uh, so here's a, here's the other thing that I wanted to that I discovered that I stumbled on in this um, in this investigation and um, is that we you, you heard you guys heard about the, the the judge the Supreme Court judge which one oh uh, Scalia no no not Scalia there's um, her, it's a, it's a, a Muslim name Ab Abdul oh, who Salam who landed in the river yeah 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 there's a couple of there's a couple of conflicting stories yeah that she was walking through Harlem where she allegedly lived. Right. And then she she walked 10 blocks up and then a couple of blocks down and threw herself in the river. Uh-huh. Which is which is the, the whole story doesn't make sense. First right. of all, she now that why the story is interesting is because she was the she was one of the judges at the first department appellate division for 10 years before 2000 she was appointed by Patterson government uh, New York governor Patterson uh -huh. and then she was elevated to the appeals court in Albany by Cuomo so that was in 2013 so she had been living in Albany you know or how else did she work in the court? That's the part of the story that hasn't been revealed in the media yet. Like it didn't make so sense. So what was she doing in the Bronx? What was she what was she doing in Harlem and, oh, and Harlem. she obviously owned her she owns a house on 131st Street. Uh-huh. And and I, I've actually looked I haven't done the walk That's yet, not really a commutable distance, Albany to Harlem. No, it's not. It's not. It's pretty far. I did see one one breadcrumb that said that she was here for a, a Columbia University um, uh, gathering some sort of reunion, so that could that could, that could say, be. yeah, that could be the reason why she came back. But what what doesn't make sense in the story is that the walk from where she lived that that allegedly started at 7 p.m. and where she was found in the water is a four-hour walk. Wow! It's a four. It's it's no. It's it. They said it took her four hours from 7:30 to 12:30 where they saw her enter the park. That is a 10-minute walk. 131st Street up to 145 and you bang a left and go down into Riverside Park. Right. It's a 10 minute walk. What was she doing for four hours? Maybe what was, 20. Maybe. What was a high judge 
yeah. high judge, an yeah. appellate judge doing for four hours walking the streets by herself in Harlem. Not believable. I mean, it's, I don't think anybody so would really walk around for four hours. You'd be pretty worn out. That's a, yeah. that's a lot of walking. <laughs> right. right. You, you know, and, and all the cameras caught her on the same block, allegedly. Uh-huh. So that's that's a story that I, I found out because what, what I, I would say is that what was she looking at? What cases? Well, why do you kill a judge? You know? I don't know. I don't know. Why, why did, why did, why was it? Did, seems did, to be a lot of that happening. Barrington Wisenant and, you know, right. lawyers, judges. Talk uh, about it. It's very strange, huh? It's a scary idea. I mean, you know, for me, I, I, blowing the whistle was, you know, going up against the, the whole bureaucracy. You know, and I, I was telling Jason before that it's not, I, I don't walk around, like, you can't reach me right now. I don't have my phone, I don't have any electronics on me that are traceable. You yeah, know, I noticed you had kind of an older phone. Yeah, my, my electronics are not going to be traceable. My, my, all my equipment is, the wi fis are turned off when I'm walking around. So I'm only in hot spots rarely. And that's uh, because, uh, you know, I know something about law enforcement. You can't, you can't uh, trace a phone. Right now we're traceable because we're broadcasting to the world. And we're, but we're sitting in a public park. But when you're walking around your neighborhood, um, you know, that's where they, you know, they like to call in their favors, so you have to be, you know, for me, I had to be vigilant until I exposed it, and this um, story is, this is not breaking news, this was on ABC, um, Jim Hopper did a great job at exposing it, because this is, this is the one story that really pisses people off, because it, they feel like, you know, a quota, they're, they're getting shucking down, you know, they're getting like, yeah. You know, here they come again. It's like, come on. The city why? shaking you down, of course. It's the city shaking you down, and then the city alleges that they they take that money and they reinvest it in the community. I don't think so. It's bullshit. It's, that's total bullshit. That money goes in this kind of black hole. Lining people's pockets. Lining people's pockets. Now, there's, there's also speculation within the, the, the division that that money somehow lands in politicians' pockets. I, I haven't... I, I don't have... It. Look, I'm not... I only talk about what I know. Right. And I guarantee 100% that there there is a quota. I documented it. If I was allowed to subpoena the records, which I wasn't allowed to do so far, I was shut down. Every time I tried to subpoena, they, 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 the judges just threw it off the table. Huh. Now, if I could subpoena really? those two... Yeah. If I could subpoena those two pieces of information, the 144 forms, all of mine... And the 206 book, that's the end of the story because it's not in, it's not my words that's saying there's a quota. The lieutenant says it in his own words that this is what we do. We write tickets. We, we, we come here, we generate cash in the city, we write tickets, we go home. There's nothing else about it. Listen to it, listen to it in his own words. And then that information, you document it on your form and then they documented it on their form. So it's, it's 100% documented and the city if the city burns those records well there's your evidence right there wow and here's the other thing there's um to the people inside the SNY there's a lot of I have a lot of support inside a lot of the the, the line agents uh, you don't hear me it was you know they 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 respect what I'm doing they cannot believe to the extent that I went to do it and um, you know they're not my enemy you know people are color certainly are not my enemy I was just trying to what I was been trying to do is point out that you have a lot of good people caught in a really bad situation and they use this, this kind of fear tactic to keep it in place you know and it's it's very reminiscent you know and I, I, it's very reminiscent of the, the politics the democratic politics that we're seeing you know play out with the, you know the whole um, the way the Clintons operate you know, the way, um, you know, the, the AG, the uh, IG, or AG, whatever the hell. The Inspector uh, General or the, the Attorney? Attorney General yeah. Schneiderman. Uh-huh. I, I, I contacted all these people. I contacted the IG. Sometimes you see the, um, the the little the badge in the subway. It says, if you see corruption, report it to the <laughs> DOI, Department of Investigations. <laughs> I did that. You know what I mean? I, I called them and told them what I had. They started yeah. investigating me. <laughs> <laughs> They wow. tried, the guy was up my ass trying to say, what did you, bug the room? How did you get that, how did you get your recordings? 
Huh? I said I, was, I work there. I, I, I'm allowed to. I can record whoever I Just want. Just on a cell phone in your pocket or something? No, I, I have, I'm a musician. I, I to mention I was a musician, right? right? I have very good recording equipment. I was, uh-huh. wearing, a little, uh-huh. I was wearing a little tie clip mic. And I, 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 you know, in New York State, it's what's called a, uh, a one-party... Um, right. Uh, a, long story short, I can record you as long as I know one You're a party, party to the conversation. If I'm a party to the conversation, I, re- I can record. Right. Like, if You're they, not spying. You're no. Right. Here's it's only illegal if two people are recording and someone else is recording that conversation, and that's right away. Like you, so, you mean like if someone's recording our conversation and we don't know about it and they're not part of the conversation. Correct. And then they exploit that recording. Right. That's illegal. Right. That's that's basically bugging, bugging, bugging. It. I don't know what the crime is, but that's or wiretapping high, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's high, highly illegal. You can't record two people talking on a phone, but. You're within your rights, regardless of what the police say or what any employers say or what some stupid ass sign says. You know, you can. Re- if someone is, and especially when you think a crime is, is being committed or uh-huh. some sort of uh-huh. corruption is going uh-huh. on, you can. You're within your rights to report. Because you know what? The other day, when we were at the U.S. Capitol Police, I was asking them if it's illegal to report or if it's just against the rules, and they were. Very reluctant. To, I asked that question many times, and they yeah. wouldn't answer it. Well, again, every state has a different rule, so you gotta right. see. Could I'm be talking different. about New York. Could I'm, be different. You know, in Could New be York, different. I did my homework, and I knew I was in within my rights before I went publicly. But it's, it was interesting that they were reluctant to answer that. Yeah, and not only reluctant, but they want they turn around, and stick the knife in your back. <laughs> they jump on your back, sticking the knife in your back while you're trying to expose corruption. If you see something, say something. Yeah. You know, Marcus, everything that you're saying is very reminiscent of a theme that's been kind of a through line since we started Crowdsource the Truth. Did you yeah. see the episode where we went to Oxford and we saw Eric yeah. Braverman give his speech? Where, he, yeah. you know, and if yeah, you've seen that, see did you see the Blavatnik School of Government's actual live stream with Braverman and the three other panelists yeah. talking? About I, I saw a piece of that, yeah. And his, his, um, his behavior is is very typical of, like, I saw your piece with, with Hillary Clinton and Uma Abedin, Uma, <laughs> at the bookstore. Yeah. And what happens is they just sit up there and they spoo, and the second you ask an important question, some thug jumps in between you and, and her. And that's what happened to you guys in in, um, in uh, England when you tried to approach Braverman from out of nowhere. They either try to keep you out of the room or yeah. some some thug gets in between you and them. And that's a clear sign that they're, they're under protection. Clear sign. Braverman is probably, you know, well, I, again, I'm not I'm not some high investigator, but I, I have fought, I was a Bernie guy, you know, my politics. And this, all, my story happened before the campaign. I was already, you know, cooked and done, <laughs> you know, before the campaign started and then uh, having seen that I started to you know Bernie Sanders came up and he was challenging he was he was this guy from out of nowhere you know this you know this this nice soft spoken senator from Vermont uh-huh. calling out corruption like he had never seen it before like he was you know he was saying all the things that we already know that Goldman Sachs is is corrupt that you know, 99% of trading on Wall Street is inside of trading. Huh. You know, and he was saying that unless you get the money out of politics, you know, I, I know that, I know one of the focuses of Crowdsource the Truth and George Webb is that there's a spy ring in Congress, that there's a lot of corruption among the, among the, the politicians, and that's right. true. But even further is is that they, there's no term limits. These, you know, some of these yeah. people are fossils. They, yeah. Sorry, I spit on your camera. That's all right. <laughs> Is that they've been on the, they've been on in, in office for thirty years? Go away! Yeah, you know, thirty years. Yeah, it's too much power that they're able to kind of uh, right. And then and then there. Citizens United, that that law was passed where they can the disastrous they can, Citizens the, United the disastrous the Citizens United must be overturned. Right, Bernie was saying is because it's true is that that is if money keeps flowing in, unlimited bribery is now legal. It's right. now illegal. Thing, Legal, money yeah. Is, money yeah. is speech. It's a business, right? So, so unless you uh, address that, right? You, you know, you could. The spy ring is bad. I mean, I, nobody even saw that coming. That was like, holy shit! 
Like, holy, yeah. holy shit, is it that? You know, and, and the other saddest part is it, of it is um, is that people don't want to believe it's that correct. I, yeah, it's it's like people, cognitive dissonance for most people. You, you hear it, you say, no, 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 no. Right, right. They rush it, Russia, Russia. Right, right. No, 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 it can't be. Oh, no, no, it's, you're against Muslims. That's why you don't want Right. It. That's why you don't want, it's why you're talking about, you're blaming the Muslim guy for all the damage that Trump is doing. Right. You know, and meanwhile, Trump, I'm not a Trump guy. You know, I would have, I voted for Jill Stein. Uh-huh. You know, uh, I, I, I'm not against Trump. I, I don't find, I find him very funny. I thought the, his tweets are brilliant. <laughs> I, I thought the golf ball thing the other day was I think if you, high genius. If you grow up in New York, there's a certain amount of oh. understanding of Donald Trump's so humor and great, demeanor yeah, that a, great, a lot of people outside of New York yeah, maybe yeah. misunderstand. We, we grew up we grew up with him. Yeah, he's been in the news kind of forever, right? I mean, yeah. it seems like he would have heard something. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and if they really want to go after him, you know, Donald Trump, you know, just growing up in the city, he was, you know, this is New York City. This was the, the, the mob controlled New York City for 50 years, 100 years. And, you know, Trump arguably was in bed with then mayor, I guess it was uh, Abe Beam. Who came after him? What's his name? The very flamboyant. Koch. Koch, of course. The Koch administration. So I met him one time. Yeah. Ed Koch. Super tall. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also, he was a nice consummate guy. politician. Very nice guy. Very, yeah, nice he guy. was like, very interested in you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Good conversation. He was. He's actually buried. He's one of the last... Uh, yeah, he died just like two or three years ago, right? Yeah, he's buried in Washington Heights. In the but anyway, he, you know, Trump has got all that uh, stuff. You know, why don't they go that after we, that, you know? Yeah. So, well, Marcus, I really appreciate everything you're telling us. Is there is there a way that people can find you online, maybe... Uh, go see you at a show or somehow support your yeah. music or something like that? <laughs> well, there's a, there's another part of what I do. Um, I am, um, you can also YouTube, uh, you can, if you want to hear me sing, uh -huh. play. I'm the ghost of Brooklyn. Uh -huh. Okay, there's a, there's a fictional character on YouTube and I've, I've been in many bands over the years. So, you know, I'm, I, again, I'm in my 50s. I've been in bands since I'm like a teenager. So, there's that. I'm not here to, you know, plug that or bring anybody to it, but uh, certainly, you know, it's certainly there if you want to listen to it. All right. Well, listen, man, it was really good meeting you. I it's appreciate really you coming out to meet Thank me. Thank you so much. Keep up the good work. Thank you, you very doing, much, Marcus. what you're doing. This is the future right here. All right. This is the future of journalism right here. This is what's happening. And, you know, support them all. You know, even if they fight like cats and dogs, H.A. <laughs> Goodman and, 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 and Tim Black and, you know, and, and Cenk Uger, they're all, they're all, they all have heart. Okay, they're all in it for the same reason. They're not taking the money, and they're, they're you know they're all fighting the same fight. So stick together. All right, man. Thanks very much. Great to meet you, Marcus. Take care of yourself. See you soon.